In this problem, we study two concepts that are important for mechanics, the dot product and the cross product. Um, what we're looking at is a boat from above um, that is moving at a velocity v in this direction towards the top here. Um, and it's a sailboat and the wind is pushing the boat and the wind is coming from the bottom left and pushing the boat with a force f over here. And we know the length of f, um, the angle of theta, the speed v. And we try to answer two questions. Uh, one is, what is the power that is contributed by the wind? The wind is helping the boat along. At which power is the wind helping? And the second is, what is the moment exerted by the force due to the wind around the twisting, the moment around the center of gravity, which is here? How much twisting, twisting force, if you want, um, this force is exerting around the center of gravity? You may be thinking this has in fact, little to do with fluid mechanics, and I would agree with you, this is more solid mechanics. Um, it's a boat, it's wind for sure, but it's not a lot of fluid mechanics, not a lot of fluid flow in there. Um, but the fact is, this exercise helps us very much um, to practice with two very important concepts, the dot product and the cross product. I've added an appendix at the end of the lecture notes where you can check out definitions for those two things. We'll practice a little bit with those two concepts right here. Okay, so let me move this down here so we can keep it in, in sight. And, and let's take a look first at the power, the power that's, that's contributed by the wind on the boat. Yeah. Um, the work um, cr created by an object pushing another one is written W, and the power as work um, would be then W dot, yeah? the rate of work per second, if you want, rate of work in time. Um, so the power, W, is the dot product of the force and the velocity. Yeah. Um, the dot product of two vectors is a number. It's a scalar, a scalar value. And so it's okay to have two vectors on the right side of the equation, and on the left side just to have a number over here. Uh, the unit of work um, is would be joules, and the unit of work per second would be joules per second or what? Yeah. Um, so joules per second may sound intuitive, but um, the unit of what um, uh, is a bit confusing because it's also written W. So you have W dot that's written in W, uh, which may be a bit confusing. What is the dot product of F and V? Well, let me, let me uh, draw a diagram perhaps um, down here below of v first this is the velocity at which the boat is moving this is v here and then let's take, let's take a look at f f is to the side like so yes at an angle theta over here so this is f here what is the dot product of f and v well it is the amount by which f is contributing to v the force exerted by the wind um, it has basically two components. One is sideways, and the part of the force that's sideways is just pushing the boat sideways. It's not helping the boat, because right? the boat is moving straight along. And the component that's along with the velocity of the boat is the one that's actually contributing energy to the boat. Yeah? So what we want to do is to take the length of f, um, and we take the vector f and project it onto v. And this would be here, this would be f in the vertical direction, which in this case, if I look at my coordinates, is f, y over here. This would be the vector f, y, like so. And so we project f onto v, and the component of f, which is along v, multiplied by v uh, as lengths. That would be then the power um, as, as work provided by f on the boat, like so. So what we want to do here is to take the length f, yes, and project this length to take, take that length here and since we know that the angle theta here is on this side to get that value here i need to take the sine of theta like so so this is the component of f that's along v and i have to multiply this now by the by the length of v like so so now we went from a dot product of two vectors a number to just lengths over here just numbers over there yeah. and so now it's just a matter of adding the values and we have f um, is equal to 13 kilonewtons, so 13 times 10 to the power 3 here, times sine of the angle, which is 30 degrees, like so, multiplied by the length of v, and v happens to be 
meters per second, like so. And so if you type this in into your calculator, and I did this for you before, um, then you get 9.75 times 10 to the power 3. Yes. And now comes the time to write the unit, and we had here power as work. So that's joules per second, or better said, watts, like so. Let me correct this. What? Like so. And in engineering, we like always to have watts, kilowatts, megawatts, and so on and so forth. And so I can just rewrite this as 9.75 here, kilowatts, like so. Yeah. So 9.75, about 10 kilowatts, this would be about 13 or 14 horsepower. So not a very high power um, contributed by the wind, but this is just a sailboat. So it makes sense to have this over here. All right, so this is the power uh, contributed by one force over one velocity, the dot product of two vectors. Again, check out the appendix if you need some more help on this. Let's take a look now at the moment, the moment that is exerted by the force F around the center of gravity, or more formally said, about the center of gravity, the moment exerted by F about the center of gravity. All right, let me first remake this diagram here, here, so that we can see better the situation. We have the center of gravity here, like so. And we have the force. The force is applying at a point that's slightly shifted uh, compared to the center of gravity. This is F here. Yeah. I want to represent what we call the arm in mechanics, which is the distance away from the center of gravity at which the force applies. And this arm, I'm going to represent it with a vector, and we call it this vector r, the radius vector, or the arm vector, if you want. And I'm going to say that the moment is a vector, and this vector is the cross product of two other vectors. It is the cross product of r and f in this order. f put at the end of r creates a torsion, an amount of twisting, which we call the moment, which is called m, like so. The cross product of two vectors is a vector. It's not a length, it's a vector. And so we will have a direction as well as a length. We're going to take a look at the length first, and then we'll talk about the direction. Yeah. The length of m, we're going to write it like so. Yeah. The length of m turns out to be the component of f, which is perpendicular to r, multiplied by r. Yeah. So I'm going to say it is r multiplied by the length of f that is perpendicular to r. I'm going to write it like so, f perpendicular. Why? Because this force here twists around the center of gravity, so exerts a moment in this direction like so, this is m here, that is proportional to the component of it that's perpendicular to r, like so. This force here, f perpendicular, and f contribute the same amount of twisting, as would be, for example, a force that's as long but has the same perpendicular component over there. Yes, R times F here as vectors is the vector m, which we could call, we could represent here as a twisting motion, and the length is R times F perpendicular, like so. Um, and we can rewrite this now as the length of F, and we can look at the angles that we have here. This would be, in this case, F cos theta, like so. And we can put numbers now in there. The radius turns out to be Um, the radius turns out to be 2 meters, if I remember correctly. Uh, the force is 13 kilowatt, uh, kilonewton, I'm sorry, so 13 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. Um, and we have over here the cosine of 30 degrees over here. If you type this into your calculator, like I did before, here, you will get 2.20. 25, 25, 17 here, times 10 to the power 4. And what is the unit of a moment? It is a force at the end of a length. Yeah. So newtons at the end of meters, newton meters, like so. Newton meters. And again, in engineering, we like newton meters, kilonewton meters, meganewton meters, and so on and so forth. And so I can rewrite this as 
0.52 here kilonewton meters and this is the length the length of the vector m which is like so let's talk now about the direction of m because we said m is a vector and we calculated its length like so but we want to know in which direction it's pointing well it turns out that we represent moments as vectors as arrows yes and we position the arrow so that as seen from the arrow then the moment will turn clockwise like so, so in this case m is turning in this direction here clockwise down into the paper yeah and so i put an arrow down towards the paper and this is the direction of m here so m is down into the paper through the table that's sitting here below my finger and we could represent it as a vector like so like a cross like so because that's the tail end of an arrow that you see entering the paper like so this would be the vector m here and how do we write this more formally now we could say m has actually three coordinates m here has coordinates in x y and z and let's take a look at the coordinates that we have here we have x x to the left y to the top and z into the paper like so so the whole length of m which we calculated here at this point here this whole length here is into the paper it is in the z direction and so m has zero in x zero in y and then in the positive z direction it has 22.52 here it has kilo newton meter yeah so it's a three-dimensional vector problem if you want which sounds a bit overdone for such a simple mechanical problem yes but um it's quite important that you are familiar with these notions before we move on to uh, the further mechanics of fluids because at some point we'll need both dot products and cross products of vectors um, if you're still insecure about these things there's a really good book i recommend to practice those things and it's called Higher Engineering Mathematics by John Bird, uh, right here, like so. And this is a mathematics book, but it's mathematics for engineers. And the tone of it is very modest and it's um, quite easy to go through. It is mostly written as engineering mathematics for people who have seen it before, but it was a very long time ago. Uh, certainly very helpful uh, for me when I'm a bit rusted over these things. So this is how you calculate the dot product and the cross product of two vectors.